All right, folks, welcome back once more to the show. We're going to finish up on this guitar. Today's the big day we've all been waiting for, to hear this baby. What kind of voice does it have? I went ahead and made a uh, tusk saddle out of a blank, and I didn't show any of that because this was getting taking too long, you know, and like, the guy probably wants his guitar back. So it's done. Today we're going to put strings on it, if I can find what I did with them. There we go. We're going to get the uh, Musician's Gear strings, 12 to 52s. And then if he wants to move up a little heavier gauge later on, you know, he can do that. But uh, I wouldn't go much heavier than that with that double X brace system, you know. That was kind of an experimental thing, I think. Anyways, I'm going to put the strings on it right now. I left this saddle up great big and high. It fits tight. And uh, put a couple strings. I'll probably put some old strings on it first. And just so, you know, get in the ballpark of how much we're going to take off at the bottom of the saddle. We know at the 12th fret, if we want the string action to come down, say, 20 thousandths, we've got to take 40 thousandths off the bottom of the saddle. Always double what you want your action to go down. So I'm going to put a couple of strings on anyway and get in the ballpark, and I'll bring you back for that. Hold on. start with only two strings because look at this. Look at that action, man. Try to get something dark behind it so you can see. Look at that. Now I told you it's going to drop fast down here. It, it is. But I can lower that saddle and bring that way down from right now without having to wait very long to do it. So I'll just do that. Uh, before we put any more strings on it, take loosen them up. Take the saddle back out. Well, actually, I need to get a measurement there before I do that, just to get in the ballpark. So hold on, I'll bring you back for all that. Now yeah, this is just to get into a ballpark figure. I'm going to have to do this again. All right there's about 40 thousandths, roughly, uh, maybe closer to 45. And I'm just going to sand it down until the thing's flat with the vise here, until this, the saddle is flat with the vise. And try it again. I know I'm going to have to do it again, though. up a sucking device. Hold on for that. Welcome back. Got her strung up and up to pitch. And uh, I got the saddle down as about, as about as low as you're going to be able. I, you could go a little bit more with that saddle. My God, man, it's getting really thin. Uh, I guess the first thing we'll check is nut action. Well, I got 17 thousandths here, equivalent to 17 thousandths. I'd like to see 16 to 18 thousandths. <laughs> and that's it. It's 17. 17,000 is what it is. On every string. That one might be 16. A little less, but this guitar's got some issues, man. It really does. It's got, uh, there's no way that you can do a regular setup like we know it. And the guitar needing the neck reset this bad. It's got backward bow in the neck because the strings get so high so quickly from about the body on or the 12th fret on even. We shaved the bridge as much as we could. I like to see 12 thousandths on this. Neck relief, but you know, the truss rod comes all the way uh, about right there. 
you got to reach up in there to about right there is the end of the truss rod. So that's where I'm going to note it at. Uh, let's see, 7. Yeah, see, this is a 12 thousandths. And it's raising the string. Because there's backward bow in the neck. You see, when you go under that. Now, if I set that at 12 thousandths the way you normally would a normal guitar, that's going to make the action even higher. We're going to put back bow, uh, forward bow into the neck relief, okay? And that's going to make the string action raise. Someone has tightened that rod and it's still under string tension. It's got a back bow in it to lower the action. And the owner said he only cared about up to 7th or 8th fret, I think he said, or 5th. He said he only played cowboy chords on this guitar. And, uh, you know, without resetting the neck, I shaved a lot off of the bridge already. I wouldn't want to take any more than that and risk, you know, it pulling apart under string tension. So that's why it's got back bow, and that's why the relief, let me try it right here at the body joint. It, you are not going to see any relief, I'm sure. See, that's lifting the string. It probably won't even go under here either. No, see, it won't. It's because there's back bow in the neck. No relief at all. No relief. Let me try it all the way back here, and I'm sure it's still not going to work. See that? Lifting the string. Ah, uh, see, right there. Wow. Well, let me zoom you out here a wee bit and lift you up here and we'll check the uh, string height. And I'll show you the what I was talking about, the action raising very quickly in a minute. Really, I shouldn't even read the string height at the 12th fret because that's it's coming up fast right there, man. I will and tell you what it is. It's 130 thousandths at the 12th fret on the low E side. And uh, about 90 thousandths on the high E at the 12th fret. 90 thousandths. And I'll show you the, the saddle here in a minute. You, you're not going to be able to take any more off of it. The neck is just at the wrong angle. But now, you know, from the 10th fret right here, back, it plays like an electric guitar, man. I mean, it's just... It starts to get a little bit funky right in here. Uh... String action, the seventh fret, ninety thousandths on the low E, and on the high E at the seventh fret, fifty thousandths. And and it it's very low from the tenth fret back this way. It is extremely low. You know, from the tenth fret here. All the way up through here, it's very low. That's what he said. That's all he said he cared about. And I said, well, that's about all I can get out of it, you know, without resetting the neck on it and shaving the bridge. Let me get the camera. I'll bring you over here and I'll explain some things better to you. Hold on. All right. See how low that saddle is already? I mean, there's not very much saddle sticking up out of there. Before, you wouldn't have been able to get that much. I mean, you know, with the bridge up higher, by lowering the bridge, exposes the saddle. Shaving the bridge exposes more saddle and gives you room to lower the saddle even lower than you normally would. Okay, but by this fretboard extension being so thin, now look at the action down here. I mean, look at it up here. There's the nut. See, we got good action all the way down here. Right in here, it starts to get high right there. And it quickly, 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 see how that's sunk in the top? Strings get very high, very fast down here. Okay? And the thickness of that uh, fretboard extension right here, look how super thin that is. This bridge, this area that we shaved, really needs to be the same height as this. That thin. Then you would have to route the saddle slot out deeper. 
and you'd be able to lower the saddle a little bit more that way but my god man that'd be getting awfully thin on this bridge it's got enough meat on it there left you know you don't have to worry about it ever splitting or coming apart and there's the crack here we worked on can't feel that at all anymore you can see it but uh, all these cracks around here are all sealed and fixed and that neck never moves man check this out too under string tension from the 70s and it's still that flat granted it does have a little bit of a that's not really a belly that's just a the guitar flat not all flat tops are completely flat topped they call them that but they're, they all have a little bit of a bubble arch to them and usually on the back too intonation is surprisingly good but when you when you come down in here in the action this high you know you tune that string in tune you press it down to make a note it's stretching the string and it's going to make the note down here higher because you're stretching the string so far but from the tenth fret I think he said maybe from the fifth or seventh I can't remember but I told him I said I can make it play easy down to the tenth fret I'm sure of that from there on he, you know <laughs> there's what you get man unless you want to reset the neck on it maybe we should have just done that but I did what I was told and there you have it see how low that action is up here check that out man that's really low and nice up there and that's all, that's all he really wanted so I guess it's time for us to hear this thing kids I'm gonna buff it up before I send it away and uh, you'll probably see it again in one more video let's listen to it well, there's 1,352 guitar pickers in Nashville And they can pick more nerds than the number of ants on a Tennessee AU There's 1,352 guitar cases in Nashville And anyone who unpacks a guitar can play it twice as better than I will Yeah, they're Nashville cats Play it please, country waters, Nashville cats Wilds, Mountain Dew, Nashville Cats They've been playing Sweet Saints, Babies, Nashville Cats They wild, been playing Sweet Saints too Oh, I haven't sung any for a while, as you can tell, but listen to this, man When you get down in here, it's a different story. This guitar is solid as a rock, man. I mean, it, 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 the neck never moved. Nothing moved at all. It's just really a solid, solid, well-built guitar. And it'd be worthy of a neck reset. Uh, if the owner ever wants to do that, I mean, yeah, it's going to shoot the value right back up on the guitar. You may have to put a thicker bridge on it. Or you could set the neck to uh, angle it right so the plane of it would match the plane of the fretboard at least down to the body joint or so and get it more playable in this area. Now you can play it down here. It's just very hard to chord down there with that action that high. Right there, about right here, it starts to get easier. And as you come back this way, easier and easier and easier all the way.
love that sound. It's definitely got that old Gibson sound. I would like to have heard it when it had the pinless bridge on there. Because like I say, now we're coming up from the inside of the guitar, up over the brake angle and over the saddle. We got a lot more down pressure there than we had, than the guitar ever had before. And that's bound to sound better than that pinless bridge sounded because of that style. And I'm playing it pretty hard too. I don't hear any string buzz at all, except for my hands failing, but that always happens. the true sound of this. I don't use a mic to demonstrate the guitars I work on because I think the camera, you know, picks them up more truly, what they truly sound like than a mic does. A mic makes them generally sound better than they normally would sound if you know how to set the mic and got a good mic. Anyways, there you have it, folks. She ready to roll. Tonight is, uh, uh, let's see what it's like, Friday night. I don't know what the date is. The 23rd, I think. I think it's the 23rd. Friday night. I'm going to watch this thing until Monday, and if everything stays the same, it don't change any or much. Put him in the mail Monday back to the owner, and uh, hopefully he'll like it. At least he'll be able to play down in here where he talked about. He said he never went past. I wish I could remember what he said, but I remember telling him, I said, I can make it play pretty easy down to the 10th fret, which is that fret right there. There's a 12th, 10th, so, you know, there's a C chord. You can bar it in a B. But now you get down in here, it's just almost impossible to play. And I can hear the intonation out. Because you have to shove the string down so far to get the note, it makes the string go sharper. Now I can hear that. Anyways, thank you guys for sticking with me through this uh, uh, long series, and thank you, uh, owner of this guitar. I won't say your name. I'll give it to too many. The, the sharks will get you. <laughs> give, some people don't like their name gave out in, in front of so many people, so I won't say his name, but I will say thank you for the business. 
And like I say, if any of you guys got a guitar you want me to work on, if you email me, put uh, guitar repair in the subject line, okay? If you uh, PM me on Facebook, put guitar repair. It's the very first words in your message because that's usually what I, all I see. I don't think Facebook has a subject line that you can put it in. So put guitar repair right in the very first words of the message and then say whatever you got to say and I'll see it that way. And uh, if we can work something out, I'll get back to you and we'll try to work something out and get together. On Man, it's hot in here tonight. It's been hot in here for a week or so now. Anyway, thanks for watching, folks. Uh, you'll probably see this guitar one more time before it goes home Monday morning. Uh, Sunday, I'll pack it up. So tomorrow, Saturday, might make a short, quick, quick, quick video and show it to you after I buff it out good and clean it up. The fingerprint's all over it right now. So, thanks again. Cheers. See you very soon.